I literally just tuned it, but.
All this is for you, Jesus. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord and Father of all. Peace be with you. And also with you. Would you like to be seated? A very, very warm welcome to you all to Liminster this evening, my first visit to this church. And we were talking before the service, wondering whether the Saxon nuns would approve <laughs> of a female bishop ordaining priests in this place. We hope it leads with their approval, uh, where they might be rejoicing uh, in heaven over our worship this evening. It's a real delight, honour and privilege uh, to be with you, to gather together for this service of celebration, of ordination, as we also share the Eucharist together. I'd love to start with a word of thanks. Thank you to Vanessa uh, for overseeing the hosting of this service. Thank you to all of you behind the scenes making us as COVID secure as possible with seating plans and endless amounts of hand sanitizer and all the like. We're getting used to it now, aren't we, sadly, but it's still a lot of uh, logistics, so thank you. I don't know who you are, but there are definitely people uh, who've been helping out. And thank you to our musicians, thank you to our guitarists and our organist as well for leading us in our sun worship. Again, at a time where, sadly, uh, we can't sing. Uh, but we can certainly worship. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given particular ministries. Priests are ordained to lead God's people in the offering of praise and the proclamation of the gospel. They share with the bishop in the oversight of the church, delighting in its beauty and rejoicing in its well-being. They are to set the example of the good shepherd always before them as the pattern of their calling. With the bishop and their fellow presbyters, they are to sustain the community of the faithful by the ministry of the word and sacrament, that we may all grow into the fullness of Christ and be a living sacrifice acceptable to God. Bishop Ruth, I present Mark David Roger to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. He is to serve in the parish of St Mary Magdalene, Liminster and All Saints Wick. Bishop Ruth, I present Charles Anthony Ashton Goddard to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. He is to serve in the parishes of West Wittery and Burden with Itchener Harbour Churches. Bishop Ruth, I present Patrick Henry Trenchard Pearson Miles to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. He is to serve in the parish of Chanctonbury. Have those whose duty it is to know these ordinands and examine them found them to be of godly life and sound learning? They, they have. have. Do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? They, they do. do. Patrick, Mark and Anthony, do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I, I do so believe. believe. Have the ordinands taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration set? They have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the sovereign and
and the oath of canonical obedience to the bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. Shall we stand together to say the glory? Glory, glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord Your God, God heaven heavenly King, Almighty, Almighty God and Father, we, we worship you, we, we give, give you thanks, we, we praise you for your glory. glory. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son, Son of the Father, Lord, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Do be seated. Let us pray for those to be ordained and for the ministry of the whole people of God. Through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love. And give to your servants now to be ordained the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the threshold shook at the voices of those who called. And the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sin, 
so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And as we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I chose you and appointed you, says the Lord, that you should go and bear fruit that shall last. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be glorified. Uh, 
Now, but I'm going to draw out from Isaiah's experience four steps in his calling that are actually, I think, common to all Christian ministers and actually really uh, common to anybody who's wanting to follow Jesus. There are four steps in the journey that are really essential if you want to be a disciple of Christ. And the first is this, a vision of God. A vision of God. Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord on his throne, high and exalted. He saw the Lord. Isaiah is writing in around the year 740 BC. And the king of Judah, the king of Isaiah's nation, King Uzziah, has been struck down with leprosy due to sin, and he's died in shame. And the leadership of the nation is unsteady and under political pressure, and it's really a time of grave national anxiety about the future. But Isaiah looks to God with the eyes of faith for a vision of who God really is. Isaiah desires to see who God, who really is. And the, although the throne of the nation may be unsteady from the death of their king, a much more important throne is fully occupied. Isaiah sees that God is on the throne and that is the defining reality. God is alive. God is reigning. God is sovereign. And this is the reality, not just for this little struggling tiny nation of Judah, this is the reality for the whole world. See there in verse 6, the angels declare, the whole earth is full of its glory. Isaiah sees the reality of God's presence and power, his overwhelming goodness and moral perfection. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And that's the first step for all of us to see God for who he really is the living God of the whole world, perfect in his nature. He alone worthy of worship. Step two, Isaiah's response to this vision of God. Isaiah sees himself for who he really is. In the light of God's holiness, Isaiah becomes acutely aware of his own unworthiness, his own sins and failings. Woe! is me, he says in verse 5. I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips. Our calling to be servants of God comes with a deep realisation, a very, very important realisation that we are not on the throne. We are not the centre of the universe. Quite the opposite. We actually have nothing to bring that we can be proud of. And the closer we get to God, and the more we see and hear and taste of his holiness, the more we understand ourselves to be very, very far short of who he created us to be. I recently read about someone who was looking after an unwanted dog, and this dog's name uh, is Prancer. And this person was looking after Prancer because Prancer's owner had died, and they were advertising uh, to try and find Prancer a new home. And uh, the adoption advert for this dog was great. It was um, the whole truth, the brutally honest truth. The advert read this. Prancer is a man-hating, animal-hating, children-hating dog. <laughs> Every day we live in the grip of this demonic chihuahua. <laughs> Prancer is a neurotic mess. He has made my home a hellscape. If you're interested in adopting Prancer, be aware he's only two years old and he will live to the age of 21 just out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this was brilliant, we all had a good laugh, until a few weeks later the unbelievable news came through that someone had actually stepped up and adopted Prancer. Our laughter turned to tears. Who on earth, in their right mind, would sacrifice their own convenience and comfort to take on that wicked mess, purely out of merciful love. So what would your brutally honest adoption advert read? Dear God, please choose me, because I am truly glorious. <laughs> Not at all. Ruth is a neurotic, people-hating woman. Every day we live with her selfish pride, 
She's a sinful mess and contributes her fair share to making the world a hellscape. She has no hope of reconciliation with her maker, aside from his kindness and his merciful love that sacrifices everything to save hers. Anthony and Patrick and Mark. People will tell you today, and you'll get cards and messages and emails, and they'll say this, you are God's gift to the church. <laughs> and we know what they mean, and it's very nice, but be very careful not to believe it. <laughs> Resist every pedestal people will insist putting you on. They will project onto you their deepest longings for you to be wonderful and perfect and good. And before long, you will be tempted to believe that it was jolly good of Jesus to die for you, because why wouldn't he? You are special and gifted and so very nice. But like Isaiah, the posture of every Christian must be our confession of sin. Woe is me, for I am lost. I am lost. And then immediately, the glorious next step for each one of us to receive the forgiveness and the grace that instantly flows from the throne room of God. And the moment we connect with the real truth about the mess of our own hearts, God's response in grace comes in the instant. Verse 6, Isaiah is touched by a live coal from the altar in the temple, the altar being the place of sacrifice where in Isaiah's time the lambs are killed as a sacrifice for sin. And the picture of this sacrifice needed for sin, for atonement, is perfectly fulfilled once and for all by Jesus. And we heard in our gospel reading, the one who is the good shepherd, who lays down his life for his people. All Isaiah's guilt and shame is taken away. He is completely forgiven and completely free. The angels, interestingly, touch Isaiah's mouth. And Isaiah, in his awareness of his own sin, said, I'm a man of unclean lips, with specific shame, guilt. And yet they touch these unclean lips, and Isaiah is transformed into God's mouthpiece, God's prophet, God's spokesperson. Such a great picture of redemption. Patrick, Anthony, and Mark, as you become priests, we'll read in a moment's time the ordinal which articulates quite how much of your ministry is to be one that is about speaking and communicating. This is what it says. Priests are called to proclaim, to be messengers, to teach, to admonish, to call people to repentance, to declare forgiveness, to tell the story of God's love, to preach the word, to declare his deeds, to bless people, and to intercede. Like Isaiah, yours is a ministry of communication, so keep coming back to a right vision of God. Keep encountering himself in worship. Keep your eyes beholding his glory. Keep returning to him in confession of your sin. Keep relying on his amazing flood of instant grace and keep allowing him to equip you for this ministry of communicating his incredible gospel. And the last step after Isaiah is forgiven is that he is sent out. Who will I send? Asks God. Here I am, says Isaiah. Send me. In response to God, every Christian is called to go out into our hurting and broken world and carry this news of God's grace and freedom. And for Isaiah, it was a difficult calling. We always end these readings uh, where we've ended it. Here I am, send me, hurrah, we pop the champagne, and it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? You read on just one or two verses, it's a nightmare. It's very difficult. Isaiah spent 40 years as God's mouthpiece, 40 years calling out corruption, speaking of hope, warning people of the coming judgment, and calling them to respond now in the light of it, urging them to respond, and his words went unheeded. 40 years of rejection. That is what God gave Isaiah when he said to God, Here I am, send me. And today is a day of rejoicing. I'm not here to rain on your parade at all. We rejoice, we celebrate genuinely, great joy. Uh, but there's a sober reality to your yes to God. 
ahead of you are moments of tremendous joy and delight, of deep, deep fulfillment in ministry and great peace. But the call is by definition a costly one. I think you know that. I think you know that. There's going to be rejection. There's going to be struggle. Uh, that's for sure. There will be warfare over you and your ministry. To those of you who are here to love and support and pray for these priests, they will need your love and prayer and support. So thank you for it, and please keep giving it. They'll need it through the joys, and they'll need it through the struggles and challenges that they're definitely going to be facing. When I was a curate, uh, my husband and I were giving a little uh, class of 30 school children a tour of the church that we were in in Nottingham. And uh, we showed them the baptistry and explained all of the stained glass windows and got all the lovely pictures of the saints and the communion set. And at the end of the tour, my husband sat them down on a little carpet and said, uh, does anybody have any questions? And the boy stuck his hand up and said, how much does it cost to join the church? <laughs> and my husband said, great question. It is completely free and it will cost you everything. <laughs> It's a costly call. So may you step into your calling with joy and abundance. May you be sustained by seeing the Lord for who he really is. May you know his grace covering over all your failings. May you know his delight as you dedicate yourselves to his service. Amen. 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 We encourage each other as we say together the words of the creed. Would you stand as we affirm our faith? We believe in one God, God the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, conceived under Pontius Pilate, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died under 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 Pilate, was True God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for us salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit at the Virgin Mary, and was a made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and called to us the church. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Priests are called to be servants and shepherds among the people to whom they are sent. With their bishop and fellow ministers, they are to proclaim the word of the Lord and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. They are to be messengers, watchmen and stewards of the Lord. They are to teach and to admonish, to feed and provide for his family, to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations and to guide them through its confusions that they may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are, called to, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. 
With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptise new disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and to walk with them in the way of Christ, nurturing them in the faith. They are to unfold the scriptures, to preach the word in season and out of season, and to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table and lead his people in worship, offering with them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for all in need. They are to minister to the sick and prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people that the whole church may be built up in unity and faith. <coughs> Patrick, Anthony and Mark, we trust that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all these things and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to devote yourself wholly to his service so that as you daily follow the rule and teaching of our Lord and grow in his likeness, God may sanctify the lives of all with whom you have to do. And now in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make these declarations that we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I, I do so accept them. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel. By the help of God, I will. Will you lead Christ's people in proclaiming his glorious Gospel, so that the good news of salvation may be heard in every place? By the help of God, I will. Will you faithfully minister the doctrine and sacraments of Christ as the Church of England has received them, so that the people committed to your charge may be defended against error? and flourish in the faith. By, By the help of God, I will. Will you, knowing yourself to be reconciled to God in Christ, strive to be an instrument of God's peace in the church and in the world? By the help of God, I will. Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and an example to God's people? By the help of God, I will. Will you work with your fellow servants in the Gospel for the sake of the Kingdom of God? By the help of God, I will. Will you accept and minister the discipline of this Church and respect authority duly exercised within it? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known to all whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. My dear brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinands are ready to undertake, and you've heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. We will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? We, we will. will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust that is now to be committed to your charge. Remember always with thanksgiving that the treasure now to be entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought with the shedding of his blood on the cross, and it is to him that you will render account for your stewardship of his people. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and the power of God. So pray that your heart would be daily enlarged and your understanding of the scriptures be enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm.
in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, have For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the members of the Church, in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Martin, our Bishop, Ruth, Bishop of Horsham, William, Bishop of Lewis, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Mark, Anthony, and Patrick, called to be priests in his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness she may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the church, that we may be one in Christ according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lost and for those who have strayed, that they may return to the way of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the hungry, for the homeless and the oppressed, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Wilfred, Richard, and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you've given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn of all creation and head of the church. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death. And that having ascended into heaven, he has given his gifts abundantly to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants, whom we ordain in your name, to share as priests in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, the apostle and high priest of our faith and the shepherd of our souls. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Mark for the office and work of a priest in your church. (laughs) 
send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Anthony for the office and work of a priest in your church. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Patrick, the office and work of a priest in your church. Through your Spirit, Heavenly Father, give these your servants grace and power to proclaim the gospel of your salvation and minister the sacraments of the new covenant. Renew them in holiness. Give them wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with those committed to their charge. In unison with their fellow servants in Christ, may they reconcile what is divided. Heal what is wounded and restore what is lost. May they declare your blessings to your people. May they proclaim Christ's victory over the powers of darkness and absolve in Christ's name those who turn to him in faith. So shall a people be made whole in Christ, offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, our God and Father, to whom with the Son and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. 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 Mark, receive this book as a sign of the authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacrifice. Anthony, receive this book as a sign of the authority which, Christ, which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacrifice. Patrick, receive this book as a sign of the authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. Amen. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Mm -hmm. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Amen.
Shall we offer our congratulations to your new priests? He has set a seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come. He has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Don't touch or kiss anyone, but you can offer them a COVID. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant to your church today the faith of her apostles, the hope of her martyrs, and the love of her Lord, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Amen. May the Father whose glory fills the heavens cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. Amen. May Christ who has ascended to the heights pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those who you love and pray for this night and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.